Hello everyone, how are you all doing? Um, I hope that you're all well and having a beautiful day. Um, yeah, today I have another prophetic message and um, it is a kingdom marriage, kingdom spouse, God-ordained marriage word. So yeah, you guys know the drill. Excuse me. Oh, you know the drill. Um, please do take this word back to the Lord. Um, and it should only be confirmation of what He has already been telling you. Um, and if it's not confirmation, you can still take it back to the Lord and ask Him whether this word is for you or not. Um, and yeah, always test the spirit behind every message and behind every prophetic voice that you listen to. Okay, so this one, I feel like it's more directed to the men. Um, perhaps you are a prodigal um, who had strayed from God and, you know, you had run away from uh, your, your God-ordained wife um, and you're feeling the nudge to like go back and make things right and reconcile but you feel a little bit of resistance from <laughs> from your kingdom wife um, or maybe you're just afraid of rejection um, and yeah maybe you also could be a kingdom wife who um, or a prodigal wife who who strayed from her husband and from the Lord, and you also feel the same way, like scared of rejection, and um, yeah, you're just fearful and unsure of how your your kingdom spouse feels, the person that's been standing for you, that is, and um, yeah, so take it how the Lord reveals it to you. Um, but I just, I do feel like it's more for, you know, the prodigals that have, um, the prodigal men that have, you know, strayed away, but are making their way back home. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the Lord gave me the song Broken Hearted Girl by Beyonce. And, um, yeah, I also just want to preface this by saying that, if you, you have like a religious mindset or religious spirit, then, you know, feel free to, to exit this page because we know that God can communicate um, messages in any way, shape or form that he pleases. And sometimes he can use, um, you know, secular or the message behind a secular song to convey a message or confirm something. So yeah, um, yeah, be open-minded to the Lord. Don't put him in a box. And excuse me, let me get into it. Um, okay, so the scripture. I'm just gonna start with scripture first. The scripture that the Lord gave me is Genesis chapter three, and it's from verse fourteen. To 19 and this is the chapter where you know the fall happened um the devil or the serpent he came to eve in the garden you know she was vulnerable she was alone adam was not with her at the time and um you know the devil he he took this as an opportunity to come and sow destruction. You know, the Bible says that the devil comes to kill, steal and destroy. And he roars, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he wants to devour. And we know that when you're a child of God, you automatically just have a huge target on your back. The devil is always going to try and attack you and use other people and other things to destroy you. Um, so yeah, the devil goes to Eve and he tempts her, says like, did God really say that you shouldn't eat from the, the tree of knowledge or the tree in the middle of the garden? And Eve says, well, you know, God did say that we can eat from any tree, but if we eat from that tree in the middle of the garden, we will die. And then Satan's like, oh no, like forget about that. You're not going to die. The only reason God said that is because you were going to become like God and you would um, know good 
you would know good from evil. And so um, Eve is like, oh, okay, this fruit doesn't look too bad. It's, it's looking delicious, you know, let me take a bite. And she takes a bite and then she gives some to Adam. And, um, you know, their eyes were opened. They realized that they were naked. So they sewed, um, you know, leaves together to clothe themselves, to cover themselves. And God comes into the garden, you know, just taking a stroll. His presence was there with them and um, calls out to Adam, where are you, dude? (coughs) Excuse me. And Adam is like, oh, I heard you walking in the garden and I realized I was naked. So I hid and I made myself clothes. God is like, who told you you were naked? Like, did you guys eat from the fruit that I told you not to eat from? And Adam blames the woman, says, oh, it was the woman you gave me. She gave me the fruit to eat. And then God is like to Eve now. He's like, what have you done? Okay. And so God um, gives Adam, Eve, and the serpent curses, okay? So I'm just going to start reading <clears throat> from, excuse me, from verse 14. Um, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. So we know that, you know, the the devil, um, he's he's just like beneath us. okay? he's beneath God. Um, Yes, he does have some power and influence, but God is victorious. Um, over everything but he's also cursed you know God placed them at like the bottom of the totem pole and literally cursed um, the serpent um, to crawl on his belly and eat dust okay and then the part that says um, I'll cause enmity between you and the woman between your offspring and hers he will crush your head and you'll strike his heel Um, I don't know if you guys know the the legend, I think it's a Greek legend about Achilles heel. So, um, I, I can't remember exactly how it goes, but basically like Achilles, Achilles, I don't know how to pronounce it, but yeah, um, he was like, a god or a demigod and he had armor all over his body and very trained well trained in war but um the one place that didn't have protection was his heel and that was where his enemies knew like okay that's his vulnerable spot let's let's shoot him in the heel because then you know, he'll be defeated. He won't be able to use his feet. He won't be able to fight um, or run. So yeah, that's the weak spot. So the part here where it says um, the woman's offspring will crush the serpent's head and you will strike his heel. So the devil, um, I know it's talking about like a literal serpent because when they bite us, they do tend to attack um, in our lower extremities of our bodies. Um, but even in a like a spiritual sense, the devil tends to strike us at our heel, um, which is a very a vulnerable spot for us. Um, and then we also... God has given us the strength and the power to crush um, the enemy with our heel and um, destroy him. Um, And I think I mentioned a scripture in yesterday's video about, you know, having that authority to uh, to crush scorpions and serpents. So, yeah, that's just a reminder that even though, you know, there is a curse and we have our weak spots, but the Lord can even use those weak spots, those vulnerable places or moments for his glory and to gain victory over the devil. Okay, so verse 16, to the woman, God said, I will make your pains and childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. And this is the 
the main uh, part of the scripture that the Lord was highlighting for this uh, prophetic message is that, you know, the Lord had cursed us in childbirth and um, our desire for our husbands is a curse. You know, um, at the beginning, he just used that as a curse because it was a consequence of the sin of, you know, Eve. So all women uh, coming after Eve would also experience that. Um, but now I think the Lord is changing the narrative um, because he's bringing these end time marriages these kingdom marriages together and a lot of us have been yearning excuse me for our our god-ordained husbands and it's just such a deep excuse me a deep longing that we're feeling um and we (laughs) we've almost been rushing the lord like oh god where is my husband i want to get married where's my husband but this is where it all originates from okay and um it's not a it's not so much a curse right now um although you know feminists and the woke people will try and spin another narrative that you know, it is a bad thing, but it's not. It's actually a beautiful thing and it's going to be used to our advantage um, as the Lord brings these kingdom marriages together um, and he will rule over you. Once again, the Lord establishing, you know, the man's authority over the the woman and his family okay and then verse 17 it says to adam he said because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which i commanded you you must not eat from it cursed is the ground because of you through painful toil you will eat from it all the days of your life it will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the field By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. So this is the Lord um, emphasizing like work. Um, For some of your, you know, your prodigal spouses, or if you're a prodigal listening to this, you may have been someone who was idolizing your work, your career, and, um, that was part of the curse, you know, the Lord says that we all have to work, you know, to, to be able to eat, to be able to feed our families and, and just pay for our needs and necessities and just to live a good life. And I think somewhere else in the Bible, it must be in like the Proverbs or Ecclesiastes, um, it says that, you know, we should enjoy our work Um, or find pleasure in it but it's very hard these days so some of these prodigals have literally been working so hard um, and just like prioritizing work over you know building that relationship with their god-ordained wife um, or just even like using work as a as a as an escape from the problems that they have to deal with. Some of them have been avoiding, you know, dealing with their issues and their trauma for a very long time. And they've used their work to, um, to avoid that. So, um, you know, for who this word is for, maybe you are someone or your spouse is somebody that, that was prioritizing work. They idolized work and work, their job was the counterfeit. Okay. Um, so yeah, they, they've been working hard and I think of late, maybe they've been experiencing, um, problems at work. The, the Bible here says that, um, you know, they'll have to toil, uh, uh, sorry, I'm stuttering. They'll have to toil and work the ground so that it can produce food for them. But the ground is going to produce thorns and thistles. And um, that signifies like the problems and issues and challenges that come with, you know, having a career and working hard to try and provide for yourself and your family. So, um, yeah, but back to you know, the, the song, I just want to go back to, 
um, Eve's curse. Uh, your desire will be for your husband. So if you are a prodigal um, husband that is listening to this, <laughs> your kingdom wife is longing for you. She is yearning for you. And um, it ties in with a broken hearted girl because in the song, Beyonce talks about, you know, the issues that she's faced with her love interest and she has felt some sort of resentment and hatred towards him but she says at the end of the day I will be there for you and she doesn't want to be broken hearted and your kingdom wife that has been standing for you is broken hearted or she was broken hearted because of the things that happened in the past between you guys, or maybe she just felt neglected um, because you've been prioritizing work and other things. But now, um, because she understands the mandate and she's been standing for you, she's been praying for you, um, fasting and interceding for you, just like going to war for you and your marriage, okay, that this was a direction from the Lord or instruction from the Lord. She submitted to his will and she surrendered and now she's like, okay, I don't want to be without you. Come back home. I don't want to be broken hearted anymore. So she is yearning for you. Um, and if you are feeling a little bit insecure or unsure um, or you fear rejection, um, go with what the Lord has been telling you to do. OK, the Lord will not dishonor you. He will not um you know, make a mockery of you. He knows why he's calling you to go and reach out to your kingdom wife, okay? And she will accept you back with open arms, all right? So I just want to go into the lyrics of the song. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This is Broken Hearted Girl by Beyonce. Okay, so the song goes, um, you're everything I thought you never were and nothing like I thought you could have been, but still you live inside of me. So tell me, how is that? You're the only one I wish I could forget, the only one I love to not forgive. And though you break my heart, you're the only one. Okay, so here, you know, gentleman um who is listening to this your kingdom wife has seen different sides of you um when you guys first started talking you know you had that honeymoon phase um going on and everything was going well but as time went on you know with every relationship, you learn about your person with time and um, things change and they evolve sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worst. So, you know, as time went on in your relationship, your kingdom wife saw sides of you that were, excuse me, quite um, unsavory, um, unpleasant. Maybe you started like neglecting her or dismissing her feelings um it could be that you spoke harshly towards her um maybe you didn't have consideration for her feelings and um you were just prioritizing other things you know your priorities changed uh during the course of your relationship or your journey and your kingdom wife is just bringing this to your attention um not to blame you and it's not to like accuse you or throw accusations at your face but this is just how she has been feeling okay but even despite all of the the bad things that she discovered about you um she says that you still live inside of me and um, she wishes that she could forget you like ladies if you're listening <laughs> How many times have you tried to like run away from this assignment? How many times have you told the Lord like, God, I don't think I can do this. 
like I'd rather forfeit the promise because it's too hard and this this man that I'm standing for is just acting crazy right now so yeah like I'm done I'm out but the Lord called you back okay (laughs) and the Lord wouldn't let the love that you have for your your prodigal spouse die right I don't know you guys can comment in the in the comments below whether this is true or not I know for myself it is true like I've tried to run away from this whole thing like so many times but the Lord is very intentional and um, he hasn't let the love die between you and your kingdom spouse or your prodigal so yeah she says like you're the only one I wish I could forget the only one I love to not forgive and though you break my heart you're the only one so even despite all of that her trying to run away and you know forsake this whole promise um her trying to avoid you and maybe she even tried to like date other people but the Lord always brought you guys together or the Lord always brought you to her remembrance and then you know he softened her heart so that she would continue praying for you okay um so yeah she says that even despite all of that you are the only one for her and she she loves you like she genuinely oh, adores you okay like there's she hasn't felt this way about anyone in her whole entire life and if it were any other guy that she was standing in the gap for she would have like left and never came back and she wouldn't even like have listened to the Lord when he was unctioning her to to keep praying for you but because it is you and the Lord has filled her heart with agape love for you you know, and just a deep sense of caring and just wanting the best for you. Um, because of that, she says that you are the only one for her. So I hope that you feel reassured. Okay. She, she loves you and only you. Okay. Um, so the song goes on to say, and though there are times when I hate you because I can't erase the times that you hurt me and put tears on my face. And even now, while I hate you, it pains me to say that I know I'll be there at the end of the day. Okay, so even though you did hurt her, you made her cry at times, um, you broke her heart probably on more than one occasion, okay, <laughs> um, because you were... You were under like deception, right? The devil was using all his different tricks and schemes and he was even using people to try and um, derail you from the Lord's plan. And this genuinely hurt your kingdom wife like to the core. But um, even though this all happened, the Lord has been healing her. The Lord has been restoring her heart and the Lord, uh, the Lord has also been reigniting those, uh, feelings of love that she has for you. Um, yes, at times she did hate you. And we know that when, um, you know, problems arise in relationships and issues aren't addressed, um, where there's a lack of communication, Um, It's hard to forgive and it's easy to have resentment build up, Um, but the Lord has been pruning her, healing her, refining her, and the Lord has been her counselor and her therapist. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, the things that happened in the past. Yes, you do still have to apologize, okay, show remorse, like genuine remorse, don't just like, you know, give a breadcrumb apology or something, but like, be genuine, be sincere, um, and the Lord has been telling you this as well, that you need to show sincerity, because, you know, as average human beings, whenever we sin against the Lord and we want to repent, we go to the Lord, we say, Lord, um, I've sinned against you and I've done A, B and C. We confess our sins to the Lord and we express genuine um, remorse for 
for the things that we've done. We we apologize to the Lord for hurting him. Um, the Bible says that anytime we sin, it grieves the, the Holy Spirit. So yeah, when you hurt someone, you have to show remorse and um, sincerity and you have to apologize and ask for forgiveness. So to a prodigal listening to this, um, just remember that, you know, um, be sincere, um, speak your heart, be genuine, be honest, be transparent and um, yeah, just show genuine genuine remorse for what you've done okay and apologize so um she's gonna be there at the end of the day okay (laughs) but you still have to do your part like go make it right apologize and you know do better so the chorus says i don't want to be without you babe i don't want a broken heart don't want to take a breath without you babe i don't want to play that part i know that i love you but let me just say I don't want to love you in no kind of way. No, no. I don't want a broken heart. I don't want to play the broken hearted girl. No, no, no. No broken hearted girl. Okay. So, um, yeah, the fact that she, like, she's thought about life without you. (laughs) Um, And because she loves you so much and she cares for your well-being, The broken heart isn't so much from, you know, the damage and hurt you've caused in the past, but it's more coming from the thought of actually like living without you. And guys, I just want to say like, this is not like a, I don't know, like a toxic or obsessive relationship. This is a very like it's coming from a healthy place. So if you are listening to this and you gen- like you feel like, oh, I can't live without this person. I'll just die without them. Like that is not healthy. OK, um, the Lord should have been filling you with like a healthy love and a healthy love, uh, devotion towards your person. OK, so, yeah, the broken heart is not so much from whatever happened in the past it's more from the thought of like having to you know not be with you okay because you guys are probably in separation now and she's been hurting just as much as you've been hurting so that's what's breaking her heart okay and she says she doesn't want to be a broken hearted girl anymore okay so go back home all right (laughs) so yeah the next verse says There's something that I feel I need to say, but up till now, I've always been afraid that you would never come around. And still, I want to put this out. You say you've got the most respect for me, but sometimes I feel you're not deserving of me. And still, you're in my heart. You're the only one. Okay, so here she's she's addressing the things that she wants that she wish she could have said, um, maybe you didn't provide her with the opportunity in the past because you may have been a bit dismissive of her feelings, maybe a little bit, um, inconsiderate, or you were just like in that, you know, that selfish, prideful, um, arrogant state of mind. Okay. Um, or yeah, maybe you had like mind control. The the devil was like using mind control and um, Jezebel spirits and the whole Leviathan spirit. Uh, you were under the influence of like demonic strongholds and and um, yeah, witchcraft. Yeah, so sh- she's kept a lot of things inside her heart, and you know when you like have things that you need to say and you don't get the opportunity to say them that can also just like cause such a buildup of anger and resentment and bitterness as well so when you guys do talk or when you reconcile um the lord wants you to be mindful to be considerate to be patient with your kingdom wife as well, because she also has things that she needs to say to you. And some of it may be uncomfortable, but 
you know, honesty is the best policy. Um, and it's just better to get the truth out there. And then you guys will work things out. You will communicate in a healthy way and you, the Lord will help you move forward from this. And then, yeah, he'll work things out for you. So, um, yeah, she's just been afraid of voicing these things out because of how you might take it. Um, so she's had a lot of consideration for how you would feel, even though you didn't always, you know, give her the same um, consideration in return. OK, so she's she's a very thoughtful woman. Um, and yeah, she thought that you would never come around. But the Lord has been telling her that you know, your prodigal spouse is coming soon, so be prepared, and um, the Lord has been working on her heart posture as well, and um, she's not saying, she's not going to say these things to hurt you or to make you feel bad, but it's just her voicing out how she feels, okay, so she says, um, you say you have the most respect for me, but sometimes I feel you're not deserving of me, and that is true, guys. Like, we have to keep it real. Um, in some of these kingdom marriage journeys, um, you know, maybe you as a prodigal, you you thought you were showing your kingdom wife love. Um, you thought you were being respectful, but you were thinking of it more from your perspective. So you weren't, like, seeing the bigger picture, okay? And she, like we we all have like different love languages right um always that we express love and respect and devotion to our partners so it could be that you were just thinking of it more from you know you were loving her how you would want to be loved but you weren't really um loving her the way that she needed to be loved okay so that's why she feels like sometimes I feel like you're not deserving of me and um you say you respect me but you haven't really shown me that you know so yeah but you're still in this woman's heart she still um she still loves you. She still adores you. She still is yearning for you. And um, she cares about you so deeply. Um, and yeah, the song goes on to say, yes, there are times when I hate you, but I don't complain because I've been afraid that you would walk away. Um, I've heard a number of times, oh, even like myself, you know, where you are feeling angry, you know, on this journey, and um you just want to like speak to your person but uh, the lord has in some instances told your kingdom wife to just like mm, keep it you know don't say anything because the lord understands that in your process as well as a prodigal you know you also have been experiencing hurt and you've been facing intense warfare as well so if your kingdom wife were to come and just like say all these things it would break you down and especially if there's like a lot of anger and bitterness in the mix it can really turn into a huge blowout so the lord has told her in some instances just to you know keep it locked or um yeah, like just to take it to him, right? Um, whatever problems or issues that she's been facing or the things that you've done that have upset her or offended her, the Lord has told her to not say it to you, but to take it to him. And the Lord has been dealing with you on her behalf, right? So yeah, that's just emphasizing that whole thing. Um, so, yeah, the song goes on to say, oh, but now I don't hate you. I'm happy to say that I will be there at the end of the day. OK, so she's basically like, let the past be the past. And now she is 
like the Lord has taken her through that process and she's surrendered, she's accepted everything and the Lord has filled her up with hope again um, and he's, you know, reignited that love that she has for you. So now she's happy to say that she's going to be there for you at the end of the day when you do return to her, when you do reconcile, when you do reach out, she's going to be so overjoyed and so excited to hear from you again okay because she's been missing you and um she genuinely does love you okay <laughs> all right so the song goes to the chorus again i don't want to be without you baby i don't want a broken heart don't want to take a breath without you babe i don't want to play that part i know that i love you but let me just say i don't want to love you in no kind of way no no I don't want a broken heart. I don't want to play the broken hearted girl. No, no, no broken hearted, no broken hearted girl. Excuse me. So now we go to the bridge and she says, now I'm at a place I thought I'd never be. I'm living in a world that's all about you and me. Yeah. Ain't gotta be afraid. My broken heart is free to spread my wings and fly away, away with you. Okay, so here where she says I'm at a place and I thought I'd never be. Um, you know, prodigal husband, if you're listening to this, um, your kingdom wife has been through a long and tedious process. And at the beginning, you know, when the Lord had told her to go on this healing and restor restoration journey um she literally was like in the darkest place <laughs> just like you were right um but now you know the lord had kept on telling them you know giving them the promise of a reconciliation and the yeah the marriage the kingdom marriage um the lord had told them that it will be a joyful marriage that their heart would be restored again, that he would um, break them free from whatever bondage was holding them back. The Lord had told your wife that um, he would heal her and he would renew her heart. For a lot of the wives, you know, they had gone through a moment of, you know, their heart being hardened towards you. Um, they felt bitterness and anger towards you, and they really couldn't see how the Lord would bring this about, how the Lord would restore the relationship and how the Lord would bring you back. But now because they've been through their process, they finally are at a place where it's like, oh, now I see. And now I'm, I'm feeling joyful again. I'm feeling hopeful. And my heart is free um, because the Lord has you know, renewed their hearts and given them a heart of flesh in 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 place of the heart of stone that they heart that they had towards you, right? So yeah, now she's got like a, <laughs> a new lease on life, um, much like you also have right now. Um, the Lord has given you like renewed strength and he's going to give you courage and boldness to just make that move and reach out to your to your kingdom wife. So you guys are in alignment right now. OK, um, and God has been just so faithful because when he says a thing, when he makes a promise, um, he fulfills it. You know, there's no word from the Lord that can return to him void whatever the Lord says, it must fulfill that which it was sent to do. So if the Lord said, I'm going to restore your marriage, I'm going to bring your prodigal spouse back. Um, I'm going to renew the love between you guys. I'm going to give you a new, um, fresh marriage, you know, it's going to happen guys. <laughs> it's going to happen. So you guys are in alignment now. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the, the end of the song. It just goes, uh, goes to the chorus again. Oh, sorry, I forgot this part. Um, and got to be afraid. My broken heart is free to spread my wings and fly away, away with you. So she's saying here that, you know, prodigal husband, you don't have to be afraid. Like this is your wife saying now, or the Lord conveying to you what your wife is feeling, that you don't have to be afraid to make the move. You don't have to be afraid to reach out to her. You don't have to be afraid of 
rejection because there is not going to be any rejection, okay? Um, she's going to accept you with um, open arms. Um, she's going to love you um, probably even more than she loved you before, just as you um, are going to love her uh, more than you did before and you're going to love her better okay because the Lord has been showing you things he's been teaching you um, how to love her and you've also been studying your kingdom wife and watching them from afar okay so you don't have to be afraid um, and the Bible I actually learned this fact um, like months ago the term um, do not be afraid or do not fear is in the Bible 365 times, okay? And we know that in a year, that the average year, it has 365 days. So it's almost like the Bible tells us each and every single day, or the Lord gives us a reminder each and every single day that we don't have to be afraid, okay? Um, so yeah, the Lord is saying, don't be afraid, there's not going to be rejection. Um, she's not going to shut you out. Um, just the same way that, you know, when you ran away from the Lord and you went back to him, you repented to the Lord and the Lord accepted you with open arms. Um, your wife is going to do the same thing. <laughs> like if she did reject you, she would be dishonoring God and basically calling God a liar, you know? So, um, she's not going to reject you. Just like, don't be afraid. Be calm. Ask the Lord to give you peace. Um, ask the Lord to give you courage. And yeah, just block out the lies of the enemy because I know that he's also been lying to you guys a lot. You know, as prodigals, he's been trying to bring up things in the past or he's been just telling you lies like, Oh, your kingdom wife has moved on already or your kingdom wife doesn't care about you anymore. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Your kingdom wife loves you. She cares deeply for you. She still loves you. She still needs you. And um, like the, the scripture in Genesis says, she has a longing for her husband and it's not a curse. It's actually it's beneficial for you because when you do return to your kingdom wife, she is going to just like you're going to be so overwhelmed by the love, not in a bad way. And you're going to you're going to be thanking the Lord. You're going to be saying like, Lord, <laughs> I can't believe this woman loves me so much and I'm going to do my best to love her better. And Lord, I'm so thankful that you were mindful of me just to give me such a precious and wonderful love story. Okay, so ignore the, the lies of the enemy. It's not true. Rebuke it, cancel it, denounce it in the name of Jesus Christ. Go back home to your wife, okay? <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, the, the song just goes on to the chorus again. And that's the end of it, guys. Um, yeah, I, I hope that this encourages a prodigal husband who who has been unctioned by the Lord to go back home. Like, please don't be afraid. Just do what the Lord had told you to do. And obviously, like, ask him for strategies. And he'll tell you when the time is right. Um, a lot of you guys do have the green light already. But fear is holding you back. So yeah, I pray that the Lord just gives you strength. I'll be praying for all the kingdom wives as well um, that are in their marriage season or in their reconciliation season. Um, I'm praying for all of you guys, like God is at work. Um, and yeah, I hope that, you know, if you guys have testimonies, feel free to email me um, or share your experiences or what you're going through. Um, and yeah, like I'm, well, I don't want to say I'm holding thumbs, but I am praying for you <laughs> and I'm hopeful for you, um, and this whole process. So yeah, guys, that's the end of the word for now. I'll probably be back with another one, um, later today. Um, I do have dental surgery, so I'm just trying to put out as many words as I can. And then I'll, I'll post them, excuse me later during the week 